Good morning. I'm coming to you from Solo Missionary Baptist Church, located in Rouchmont, North Carolina, where the Reverend Wayne Johnson is pastor. I will be bringing you the Sunday School lesson for January 1st, 2023, which is entitled, Blessing of Reconciliation. The lesson text will be coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 11 through 21, related scriptures, from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, and Colossians chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. My name is Charlotte Timberlake. The scripture lesson text will be coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 11 through 21, and it reads, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then were all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live shall not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you, in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Golden Text If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Today's lesson aim. Facts to see what Paul wrote to the Corinthians about the tremendous changes that took place when sinners become new creatures in Christ. Principle to be aware that believers have an obligation to work for Christ and reconciling sinners to him even as God through Christ reconciled them to himself. Application to urge Christians to include in their new way of life efforts to bring sinners to righteousness by faith in Christ. Introducing the lesson. There are psychologists, psychiatrists, counselors, criminologists, penologists, and liberal pastors who promote the idea that education is enough to fundamentally change people. The Bible is very clear that the human heart must undergo the transforming power of God's grace in order for true change to take place. Developing the lesson. Number one, ministering men. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 11 through 13. Paul and his team of itinerant missionaries described themselves as ministers of the gospel, 
commissioned to do all they could to persuade sinners to avoid the terror of God's judgment. Study 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 11 through 13 to determine the motives of Paul and his colleagues who stated that these were manifest to God and hopefully to the Corinthian believers. Number two, Ministering Savior, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Paul said that it was Christ's love for them that constrained the missionaries to work as ministers. Paul went on to state that all who live or have been quickened in Christ and raised up to sit in a heavenly position with him should be guided by a motivation to serve him. Verse 15. People should not be viewed according to human standards of reasoning. Many had once perceived Jesus as merely a man, but after conversion, they saw him as the divine son of God. Number three, ministry of reconciliation. Second Corinthians chapter five, verses 17 through 21. The biblical meaning of quote, reconciliation, end quote, involves a change of relationship between God and people made possible by the redemptive work of Christ at Calvary. Reconciliation thus provides the basis for fellowship with God. Paul expressed the idea as sinners being made new creatures in Christ, resulting in the passing away of the old life controlled by the sinful nature and birth of the new righteous nature. The next step is for believers to take up their God-given ministry of telling sinners that God was in Christ bringing the world of mankind to himself by providing for the forgiveness of their sins. Christians therefore can be described as ambassadors or envoys for God by representing him as the source of salvation. I will now go over the questions in the back of the lesson. Question number one, what future event motivated Paul to persuade others to trust in Christ? The answer, having just spoken of one day standing before the judgment seat of Christ, verse 10, Paul acknowledged that this prospect moved him to fear the Lord. A healthy fear of God is necessary to serve him faithfully. Question number two, why is it wrong to quote glory in appearance, end quote, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12. The answer, this, of course, was quite a contrast to the false teachers. While Paul's opponents might have been questioning his sincerity, he questioned the hearts of those who were concerned only with outward appearances. If as some suggest, these teachers were Judaizers. We know that they were particularly concerned with the outward ritual. Cross-reference, Acts chapter 15, verse 1, and Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Question number three. What are some possible reasons some might have thought Paul was mad? The answer Perhaps some accuse Paul of having lost his mind because of his refusal to take financial support from the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 14 through 15 and 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 8. His choice to focus on Christ instead of relying on human wisdom may have caused some to conclude he was mad. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. Even his use of spiritual gifts might be involved. Chapter 14, verse 18. Some have suggested that his, quote, thorn in the flesh, end quote, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, was epilepsy, which could be confused with madness. Question number four. What was the primary motivation for Paul to serve Christ? The answer, the real reason Paul served the Lord 
was the love of Christ. Question number five. Because Christ, quote, died for all, end quote, verse 15, how should we live? The answer, since Christ died to give us new life, it behooves us to dedicate our lives to serving him. Question number six, what does being, quote, in Christ, end quote, verse 17 mean for us? The answer, the expression, quote, in Christ, end quote, is a favorite of the Apostle Paul. It denotes our union with Christ and our incorporation into his spiritual body. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. To be in Christ is to be a Christian. It is to be changed by his power into a completely new person. Question number seven. What ministry was given to Paul? The answer Having been reconciled to Christ, Paul was given the ministry of reconciliation. Question number eight. What does, quote, not imputing their trespasses, end quote, verse 19 mean? The answer, quote, not imputing their trespasses unto them, end quote, verse 19, means that God was not counting sins against those who come to Christ for salvation. Question number nine. How can we be, quote, ambassadors for Christ, end quote, verse 20? The answer, all Christians should view themselves as the Lord's ambassadors. There are not enough ministers and missionaries to reach everyone. All believers must take seriously the privilege of witnessing for Christ. We do not carry our own message, but the reconciling message of the Lord Jesus. In question number 10, how did Christ become, quote, sin for us, end quote, verse 21, and what results because of his sacrifice? The answer that God, quote, made him to be sin for us, end quote. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 21 means that Christ became a sin offering on our behalf. This should not be taken to mean that Jesus became a real sinner. Rather, he took the place of sinners on the cross. His substitutionary atonement made possible our righteousness and thus our right standing before God. Cross-reference, Romans chapter 5, verse 17. I will now go over the practical points. Number one, we should seek to live transparently before God and other people. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Number two, decorum is not as important to God as a true heart, but it does have value in ministering to others verses 12 through 13. Number three, the self-sacrificing love of Christ should be the controlling factor in all our personal interactions, verses 14 through 15. Number four, if we really believe that people become new creatures in Christ, it should affect how we treat others, verses 16 through 17. And number five, we have been given the most important message the world will ever hear, verses 18 through 21. Summary, the ministry of reconciliation involves showing a sinner how to stop being an old creature dominated by sinful nature and move on through and beyond the terror of divine judgment to become a new creature dominated by a righteous nature. Being such an ambassador is both a responsibility and a privilege. It is important that all of us who are Christians be motivated by love in our attempts to spare sinners from eternal torment. Is your role as ambassador for Christ 
part-time, or is it full-time? Can you faithfully represent Christ in the words you say, the things you do, and the choices you make each day? New creatures should reproduce other new creatures. This will conclude the lesson for this morning. Thank you for listening. May all the blessings of the Lord be yours in abundance in the new year. Happy New Year.